Okay, so let's go through this program together, what this first PL0 program is doing. To go through it, we basically have procedures, our functions, and you can declare variables inside specific ones. So this variable a and b is within the main. This variable a and b is within procedure first. This a and b are within procedure second. And they're not global, so this a and b only is within this scope. Of that function, this a and b only exists within this scope of that function, etc. So we go down to the begin of main and we assign 1 to a and b to 2. Then we write a and b. Then we call first. First says right here, we're going to assign 3 to a, 4 to b, write a and b, call second. Second starts here. Write, assign 5 to a, 6 to b, write a and b. Second returns, first returns, and then we write A and B again in main and then end. So this is what it's doing. We're printing out 1 and 2 because A is 1 and B is 2. Then we call first. First is 3 and 4, so that's why 3 and 4 are printed out next. We call second, 5 and 6 right here. And then after we return from second and return from first, we just call out write A and B and so we print out 1 and 2 because 1 and 2 is what A and B is within main. This was just a simple program to show that that's how they exist within each scope. So now let's run through the stack. Let's see if we can make this a little easier to read. So here is the, the output of VM. We'll have this instruction set kind of here, um, and I'll try and go through the stack. So first, we jump to 24. So we go down to instruction 24, and we see that we're doing an ink. Uh, you see here on the stack, that is the command number that we run next. So we go from command 0 to 24 because of that jump instruction. So then after we do that, we have two spots that are incremented for two new values. That's going to be A and B. Then we have a lit. We're assigning one to the top of the stack. Then we do a store and storing that one in variable A, which is the first of the two that were created right here. Then we do the same thing. We do a lit of two and a store of two. So two is now being assigned to B. Then we're doing a load of this variable onto the top of the stack and doing an SIO, that's writing it. So this is how we're loading one and then writing it to the, the console, which is when we print this number right here. That's the write, write A. And then write B is right here when we load two and then to the top of the stack. Here, this call, this is where we're calling the procedure first. So you can see this is the next call stack. So now this call stack cannot be affected because this is our current one that we're on. We do an increment for two more of variables a and b within this scope. We do a lit of three, store it in a. We do a lit of four, store it in b. We do a load of a, and then we write it out to the screen. A load of b, write it out to the screen. So that's why we have three and four printed out next. We do another call. Here's the second procedure. We do the same thing. Increment two more for the variables a and b of that function. Lit five, store it. Lit six, store it. Load it, print it, load it, print it. Then we return. When we hit the end function, we're going to return that call stack. So now we're right here. And then we return from that call stack. So now we're back to being here. And we do the same exact thing because if you remember at the end of the program we write A and B back out in main. So we're going to load that, print it, load it, print it, and now we're done. That's the end. That'll kill the last call stack. So that's how you go through the program in the stack. Um, feel, three, feel free to go through a couple more input files. I'll show you kind of what they're doing. This will read in Y. So it's asking the user to input a number. So when you run this program and you see a little cursor on the compiler, or sorry, on the console, um, it's not broken. It's waiting for you to input a number, which will take that number, 
add the value 56 to it, store an X, and then write X to the screen. So let's actually go ahead and run that. This is, let's just do dash V, so we don't have to do too much scrolling. This is test one. And so now, what do we want to add to 56? Well, let's go ahead and make the value 100, so let's add 44 to it. Boom. Okay. So this is it. First, we jump to the first instruction. Then we increment two variables, variables x and y. Then we take and we read in SIO02. This is the second one. If you look back at the homework one description, the instructions at architecture, this is the one where we read in the value and store it at the top of the stack. So we read in the value 44, which is right here. Then we store it in X. Then we load 44. We do a literal of the value 56 plus 44, and we add them together right here. That's how we get 100. Then we store that in X. Sorry, I think I misspoke before. This was loading it into Y. This is X. So then we store that into x, which is 100. Then we load the 100 value from x, and we print it out to the screen. So SIO01, that's printing to the screen. This is reading input from the user. So that's why we get this right here, 100, which corresponds to writing x, which would be 100. Let's go ahead and look at a couple more. This one's very similar. Um, except we're doing if and else statements. So let me run through that. This one's doing the same thing, except we're not doing any reads. We're just printing it out. This is doing some multiplication. Same thing, but it's not anything, any new concepts that we haven't been through already. Some if else's. That's the same one. Procedure square. So let's go ahead and run this one and just see what it is. Test input six. All right, so this one looks a little bit long and I'll tell you why. This program is taking x as 1 and saying from 1 up to 10 we do this function. We call square and then we increment x. So square takes x and multiplies it. So it's literally just squaring each value from 1 up to 10 and you can see that on the stack. So we'll have the value 1, we square it and that's 1. You can see as we go through this, we get each value right here. Here's the value 1. Here's the value of 2 squared. That's 4. Here's the value of 3 squared. That's 9. The value of 4 squared. That's 16. 5 squared is 25. 6 is 36. 7 49. 8 64. 9 81. And 10 is 100. And you can go, feel free to go through and ch double check to see what it's exactly doing. Obviously, we're just loading x and then we're multiplying together, doing an operator on that. So feel free to go through all these input files and see how they work. We have loops, we have functions, we have if else ends. And enjoy. It was a really fun project to write, and it goes through the concepts of what a compiler really does when you compile a high level programming language. Thanks for watching.